Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we had a lot of stories to go over, but I narrowed it down to just the one topic, and this is the one thing that is really driving everything in the cryptocurrency digital asset space, and it really comes down to the global economy brought about by a pandemic, quantitative easing, and just basic uncertainty. If you think things were bad, they could potentially get much, much worse. And this is the catalyst for cryptocurrency digital assets. Also, that's gonna lead us into the cue of the day, which talks about Celsius and how to insulate yourself in these uncertain times. We're gonna talk about their issues with customer service and how they plan to fix them, alterations to their app to avoid glitches, and what the CEO thinks about interest rates, tax minimization, and decentralized finance and how it all stacks up. But before we do all that and those lofty questions, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is September 9th. It's about 1 p.m. Texas time, and uh, let's see what's happening. So uh, not a bad day. Bitcoin up to 10.3. Looks like a 3.3 increase. But again, it, over the seven days, it's down 13%, and that's the big number. Ethereum's busting past that 350, so at 357, maybe they could reclaim that 400. But uh, I got to tell you, Ethereum didn't drop too much. I'm pretty happy with it, even though it's been down 25% for a seven-day mark. I'll take 7% uh, up uh, over 24 hours. Fantastic. Tethers, tethers. XRP is up to 24 cents. Wow. Chainlink, 9% up. I like to see that. 12.50. But again, everything, this 24 hour uh, part right here in the middle, I mean, it's interesting to see. But if we really just take a look at the seven day, everything is just getting the, their teeth kicked in. And that's just how it is in, in cryptocurrency digital assets. Hopefully, we see a rebound, and I think we will. But that was a heck of a little pullback. But what are you going to do? That's how it works. Anyhow, I usually spend a, a lot of time on the markets themselves, but there's really not a ton of things going on. So I'm not going to delve into the price action. Uh, again, over seven days, that's the big indicator for me. Uh, 24 hours, and we do see some reversal. So I hopefully we, we, can, we will actually see that trend continue. But again, it is anybody's guess, especially with the information we're going to go over right now. So I had my whole day planned and it was going to be pretty much a typical type of video, interesting stuff uh, that was happening. I had a nice little article here about there was a uh, guest, uh, Joe Rogan, Adam Curry to be specific, and he just talked about how Bitcoin is, uh, you know, everybody's going to need to own at least one Bitcoin or you're going to need to own at least one Bitcoin for the apocalypse, which is ridiculous because there's only 21 million. So good luck with that. I think he's just talking about fractions of Bitcoin. So it was an interesting one. I'll let every other YouTuber talk about that today. Also, there was a story about IRS doubling down, uh, investing another quarter million dollars into tracking crypto transactions. So if you're in the U.S. and don't think about paying or talking about your cryptocurrency uh, holdings, the IRS, get ready. And also there was something, you know, good story about Bitcoin's correlation with gold hits record high. And they're all fantastic stuff, but really just comes down to the root, the base. And the base of what is going on is that there is just economic turmoil throughout the whole global community. And like I talked about with the pandemic, with the COVID-19, whether you believe it in or not, uh, which I think is ridiculous if you don't, you have to look at what is going on with businesses, the GDP, and the whole global economy in general. And we, if we take a look at that, the uncertainty with the presidential election that's going to happen in two months, on top of what Jim Rogers here is talking about, which is the potentially the end of the dollar dominance as U.S.-China tensions escalate. There is just a lot of problems uh, throughout the world. I think we can all agree on that one subject. But there is one positive, which, I mean, if you look at it as a positive, it is what it is. The uncertainty that you have in the economic forum is what is going to drive Bitcoin, digital assets, cryptocurrency, and even blockchain in general, uh, to new highs. So the more that we see this uncertainty, the more we're going to see uh, Bitcoin go up, gold go up, because they are a hedge against the traditional market. So this article really is to the crux of what is going on. So what's happening? Let's jump right in. So Jim Rogers, who is this guy? Well, he co-founded the Quantum Fund in 1973 with billionaire investor George Soros, which was considered one of the most successful hedge funds in its heyday. If you are in any kind of political circles, you know the name George Soros, so I'm not going to delve into that. Firstly, Rogers explained that the U.S. is now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, and it's getting higher and higher every day. I didn't, I didn't mark this part, but it's, it's something to note. The U.S. national debt is currently more than $26.7 trillion. That's trillion with a T. And this guy says, traditionally, the U.S. dollar has been the soundest 
currency in the world, but tradition changes. The U.S. dollar is coming to its century or so of dominance, and something else will replace it. The only constant thing is change. There is no way the U.S. dollar can stay on top and be the world reserve currency for a millennia. It just does not going to happen. Uh, moving forward, I can only see the dominance of the dollar uh, going uh, decreasing, just like the buying power or purchasing power of the dollar uh, going down uh, because of the inflation and all this quantitative easing. You cannot not print this much money and have no repercussions. It just doesn't work like that. The investment guru pointed to the examples of the British pound and Dutch guilder, which if you're sitting there going, uh, what's the Dutch guilder? Or, you know, British pound, is that so much of a big thing in the global economy? Well, here's the thing. It was just like in a hundred years, people are gonna be like, well, remember the US dollar? That used to be big and now it's not. Moving on, knowing that both were previously considered the most reliable currencies. Meanwhile, the world's second largest American debt holder, China, is planning to cut its U.S. debt holdings as tensions with Washington escalate. And this is not just on top of China. This is also Russia. And we covered this story a couple of weeks ago where we had talked about the different uh, economic powerhouses, you know, China and Russia being one of them, how they are trying to kind of squeeze out the U.S. dollar, which is in their best interest. And I talked about I don't see why they hadn't done that previously before, because if you love sanctions and you're, and you're a country, well, then just keep using the U.S. dollar. Dollar. And uh, that's what's going to happen. But uh, here you see that uh, Russia is ditching, ditching the dollar for bulk of its export to China. And in this article, in the next sentence, it, says, it states experts in Beijing expect China to reduce its U.S. debt holdings by 20% from $1 trillion to $800 billion. Which if you think about it, it's like, well, you know, it's $800 billion. That's a lot of money, $1 trillion. But 20%? That's a huge amount. The paper further warns that it could even sell all of its U.S. bonds in an extreme case like a military conflict. So let's just play devil's advocate. Let's just say for one second that China goes, you know what? We're calling all our debts, so pay it back. America's like, well, sorry, we're going to default. So what do you think is going to happen as far as the tensions go with that route? I can only see economic uncertainty, which again is only great for cryptocurrency digital assets. Finishing up, Rogers emphasized that China reducing American debt will put pressure on U.S. interest rates and that they should be going up. It's a smart economic and investment move, one that would strengthen the Chinese yuan, which he noted has already been happening for several weeks. And he states, if they sell U.S. debt, they sell dollars, therefore their currency goes higher. And why wouldn't you do that if you're in China? Sell all the debt, get rid of the American dollar, move to the yuan, especially the digital yuan, which is the CBDC, which is what they're trialing right now. Why wouldn't they do it and move forward to becoming even a more economic powerhouse? It only makes sense to me. Let me know what you think in the comments section and let's move on. So before we get into Q of the day, I did a poor job of uh, introducing Alex here. Uh, he is the CEO of Celsius and there was three specific questions. We'll get in that in a little, a little bit, but the reason why Alex has credibility with me and with what he is doing is because of what he's already done. So real quick, this is from the Celsius.network website. Here's Alex's bio, and it's just a very quick snippet, so I'll put out the actual great stuff. So to begin, Alex is one of the inventors of VOIP, or Voice Over Internet Protocol. So all the different Zoom applications, everything that you're listening to right now, the Voice Over Internet Protocol, this is the guy that created it. He had a foundational patent back in 94, now working on MOIP, Money Over Internet Protocol. And this is the same guy that says cryptocurrency, digital assets, essentially are going to swallow up the internet. So why he has credibility with me is what he's already done. Besides that, he's a serial entrepreneur, founder of seven New York City-based startups. He's raised more than a billion and exited over three. Alex founded two of New York City's top 10 venture-backed exits since 2000. One of his first companies, Air Bennett, IPO'd in 2004 with a market cap of $750 million. Another venture, Transit Wireless, which valued at $1.2 billion at time of exit. So this is a guy who has already done all the things. And I have talked about this in previous videos where I, I talk about what will you do when money really isn't an object? If you don't really need money, so what do you do? So this is a prime example. I don't think Alex is out there going, you know what, I really hope I can make my mortgage payment or I can really hope I can make, you know, uh, pay for my apartment, which is what a lot of people out there are doing right now, I must add. It's not that he has that. He is one of those guys who is just like, you know what? I think I can make things better. I think I can improve things. And this is why he has Celsius. And this is why I was excited to get him into the uh, office and just ask him some questions. So let's jump in to the office right now. So everybody, welcome back to the office uh, for the Q of the day. 
So today we have, it's pretty much an aggregate of uh, specific questions that were brought about uh, from subscribers. And it ranges from everything from, and it all has to do with, with Celsius, uh, the, the, the app. Uh, the first one was about customer service and growing pains because we see that around a lot for the different uh, areas, especially exchanges and wallets. There was a technical issue with uh, a subscriber named Tiffany. And there was also the third part, which talks about taxes and interest rates uh, for things like Celsius, like a crypto IRA account, and this uh, magical thing called decentralized finance. So I reached out to Celsius because I never have all the answers. And uh, they let uh, this guy come out. And uh, here he is. This is Alex Mashinsky. He is the CEO of Celsius. Alex, thanks for coming on. How are you doing? So thanks for having me. I watch it regularly. I, I, I love the summary of the news and your opinion on it. So uh, definitely uh, uh, you do a great job for the community. So a great question on the customer service. Look, I, first, let me apologize to the there was a delay. People got impacted. Uh, we did hire, uh, uh, we doubled the size of the customer service team. Uh, so now it's about 12 people. But but uh, unfortunately, again, the new people uh, sucked up a lot of the time of the people who were there and, and knew all the answers. So the productivity of, of the existing town, and we were just not ready for that. Uh, so uh, we did uh, bring it back down to 24 hours. So all uh, critical issues are responded within 24 hours and items that need uh, extra attention are within 48 hours. Uh, that is uh, seven days a week. So that includes Saturday and Sunday. And our team is based in Europe, so they are actually of the clock. So if you are a Cisco-based person, uh, you're probably not going to see an answer for a few hours, but they'll handle it overnight <laughs> and, and so on. But uh, just to mention, monitors are five days a week. So we do, um, we, we've seen a lot from our user base, 165,000 people all over the world on the weekend. And we basically made sure that the agents are covering weekends and giving people immediate answers. Gotcha. So it sounds to me, I'm just going to summarize, it sounds to me like it's, it's a growing pain type of issue, which is a good thing, right? This is a good problem yeah. to have. The you, you, double, you double your base in six months and you're going to have some growing pains, you know? So. That's how it is. And the, but, but the big thing is we know about the issue or you guys know what's happening and you're going to fix the problem as time goes on because you're like, look, this is, what we're, this is what's happening. We're growing, but we have a plan of action. That's the big thing. And we've also raised the cap. So, for example, uh, we had a twenty thousand dollar daily cap of the amount you can withdraw without extra authorization. Meaning, you didn't like if because if you withdraw more than twenty thousand, we want to make sure it's you. We want a video authentication, things like that. So, we raised that to fifty thousand. That really sure. And the daily limit uh, is thousand. Meaning, you can do three transactions of fifty thousand without a special authorization. So. We automated some of the processes as well to make sure that customers can handle their own issues and don't need an agent to help them with this or that. That's huge. Yeah. One of these days I'll be there. $50,000 transactions like that. Okay. <laughs> so Alex, thanks for answering that first one. The second one, it's, it's, it's more of a technical issue. This actually came from Tiffany. That's a pretty good question. She said, hey, I've been customer service issue again. She goes, I was trying to sell my OMG. This is when OMG came about and they were uh, helping out with the Ethereum fees. So everybody was excited about OMG and the price went up. She says, I, I tried to sell it. I couldn't do it. Don't know what happened. Then a couple of days later, she came back and said, I figured it out myself. When I hit the max button to sell the max, it would be everything and it wouldn't go through because there has to be a little bit left over. So I, she said, I figured that out myself. Can you ask Alex what they're doing for that? If that's already been fixed, it might have already been fixed. Yeah. So we're actually releasing a new version today, uh, which has a, a new look and feel as well. Uh, we're also launching... And uh, so it will be a matching uh, look and feel. And part of it is also fixing a bunch of bugs like this one, where, again, we, we're going to exclude the last three or four digits of your seven digit uh, uh, balance to make sure that uh, there's enough there for the gas fees or some other fees. So, um, again, uh, we normally pay the withdrawal fees. We don't... Um, we don't actually charge you the withdrawal fee. So if you've seen Celsius, uh, you've never paid a withdrawal fee on Celsius, right? So so we have to really look and see what happened with OMG. You don't pay any withdrawal fees on, Bit on, on Bitcoin or Ethereum, or anything like that. So it comes out of Celsius. It comes out of actually the earnings that we have. Uh, we cover all of your withdrawal fees. 
That's huge. Okay, it makes sense. So it comes down to, hey, nobody's perfect, but we strive for perfection, right? When you move fast, you break things, and uh, the key is to fix them fast as well, not just break them fast. So, so we are um, uh, we experimenting, we improving, we ir- iterating, and a lot of it has to do with feedback we're getting from the community, and sometimes that causes other uh, bugs. We actually, for every release, we have about 200 testers, community people who test the app, so like the version that's coming out today has been in test for the last three months already. And, and I think it's amazing. It has, again, new feel. And I hope uh, the community loves it. But we would love to get your feedback. Tell us what we can do better. And we'll work on it. Oh, you know what? My audience has no problems with giving feedback. You got to take a look at the comments. Exactly. So, and you know what? Just not, not to get off track, but this is, this is the whole thing about um, entrepreneurs that are after my own heart. This is Alex because he's, he says the exact same thing that I, I truly believe. You have to go out there and just throw things at the wall. I mean, a responsible amount to see what actually sticks and then go from there. Because if you don't, it kind of slows down innovation. So I can appreciate that, Alex. Makes sense to me. And it sounds like everything is going to try to work itself out as time goes on. Just going to take a little bit of time because no one's perfect. Yeah. And look, we we don't compromise on security. We don't compromise on the kind of the foundational things. Uh, What we experiment is more in the areas of... uh, enabling the users to to do what they want to do. So we, we have a very large ch- a chunk of the community who just hodls and they're in hodl mode. They never touch the coins and they just earn the yield. But other people want to transact. They, they want to leverage, they want to borrow against the assets. So so it's it's a balance of kind of uh, all of these dis- different side the Celsius community, uh, the field that you're working for them. Yeah, you know, But at the same time, you're delivering uh, for everybody. And, and I think Celsius has done that better than, than anyone else. We kind of invented this category of interest income, uh, invented the idea that you can earn a token for deposited uh, coins. If you, I know everybody thinks DeFi created that. <laughs> uh, uh, Compound 2.0 is a copy of Celsius. Even, even Uniswap is a copy of Celsius because Uniswap effectively allows people to transact, but then takes the fees and gives it to the people who are hodlers, gives it to the people who are staking their coins as well, which is exactly what yeah. Celsius does with the BTC pool, with the ETH pool and so on. So we, we love Uniswap, we love, um, you know, but I think still Celsius pays more than anybody else uh, on any coin. You know why? Well, I'm not going to, I'm trying to stay on, on topic, Alex, but the things you talk about are pretty good. So like the reason why I believe in you I believe in Celsius, it, it's because the vision that you have and the same message that you have, which is every single time I've attended an AMA, and I don't get to them regularly because I'm always so busy, but it's the same message and it's on point. And it's, it's not just about that, but it's also like you watching this video right now, you're going to hear Alex say the same thing every single time because that's what you have to do in marketing. You have to let people know seven to 10 times before they really get it. And in every single video, I've heard Alex say the exact same thing, the exact same way. Well, a little bit different. And it's I iterate to help a little to, bit. Yeah, right. but, but, but it, it helps to push it into the public consciousness, and that's what you have to do. So like I always talk about, I have a one-two punch. Uh, Celsius is what I do to, I, I store a lot of my crypto on there. I don't put everything on there because I store some in the Nano Ledger. And the other one is Voyager. And just for you watching this video right now, I want you to make mention or, or make note of who is actually on the who actually takes the time to come on these youtube channels and actually talk to their customers you got alex machinsky right here we had steve uh ehrlich from voyager uh we've had people from nano ledger uh we've had people from unstoppable domains you're not going to see a brian armstrong get out there and be like hey everything's going good and da, da, da. It's just <laughs> not going to happen so when you're thinking about who you want to put your cryptocurrency with take a look at what's being done so but by the way just uh, uh uh, Voyager is using Celsius network. So when you put ah, your coin with, with Voyager, uh, they end up with Celsius network. Anyway. But, but yeah. Voyager has a lot of other features, great app. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, obviously, they'll allow you to do things that Celsius can't. And we have over a dozen partners like that, like Mode or Bitwala, or, or we just launched with, uh, with Line, Japan, right? So we launched with their uh, Bitfront, with their U.S., and so when you're depositing with Bitfront, you're actually putting coins with Celsius. So, um, so the fact that all these major brands uh, uh, trusting Celsius is a very 
important endorsement for us. Our business model is also, I think, is being validated more and more every day because it's sustainable. We are lending to institution. We're not lending to the retail guy who just redeposits the same coin. The farming, I'm look, we're doing sustainable farming with it versus this crazy farming that you're seeing on DeFi. So, uh -huh. Alex, you're, you're walking right into the third question. Fantastic work. So this comes from, this is from Thomas and I answered it myself, but I wanted you to answer it. And it talks about uh, taxes and interest rates for Celsius. He says, Dan, I enjoy your videos, da, da, da. He goes, I didn't realize crypto IRAs existed. Thanks for the heads up. What sh essentially is saying this, what should I do? Should I put my cryptocurrency into Celsius for, uh, for the yields, for the APR or APY? Should I put it into a crypto IRA account or, and then I'm just going to add this in for decentralized finance. So Alex, the question is, is a very broad one, but let's say you have $10,000. So look, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not an investment advisor. Uh, we provide a utility uh, for many people and each person has his own unique situations to really think about. For example, if, if you're putting it in your IRA and you, you don't plan to touch that money for 10 or 20 years, then obviously that is the most efficient and tax uh, uh, efficient way to defer the taxes. We also allow you to borrow against the assets so you can also borrow in case of emergency without a, uh, triggering any tax events, which is most IRA programs allow you to do that anyway. But, but here you don't have to sell the coins to, to get access to that cash. So the, uh, the, the only reason to go straight into DeFi is if you first you have time because it takes a tremendous amount of time and you know you're very very technical you know everything about everything you have to know who passed an audit and who didn't you have to make sure that that you know like we've seen many many uh, situations where again if you you sat on your tokens for too long didn't matter if it was sushi or yams or something else you ended up losing a lot of value right so so part of what Celsius does for you is really automate all of that and gives you 80% of that value. But because we also blend our earnings from DeFi with most of our earnings, which comes from institution and retail dollar loans, we have three sources of income. Uh, our, average in, our average interest that we pay to the community is actually higher than what you could get by yourself because you cannot uh, lend to institutions. No institution is going to work with you as a retail user because you just don't have enough coins, right? These guys bought 10, 20, $3 million a pop. So Celsius is the only one of size that can fulfill these type of orders, right? So, so what we've done is aggregated 165,000 retail users, pulled all of their assets, and then lend it out to the institutions or exchanges. And we charge them higher and higher fees. The, re the reason we're raising our fees, raising our rates, right, what we're charging in interest is because there's such high demand uh, for these coins. We raised stable coins to to 11 and a half percent, right? This is, you paid, you are paid in USDC or in USDT. But if you're earning in sell, you can earn 15, over 15%, right? No one has ever seen the rates like this on stable coins. And yeah. you can deposit $10 million Celsius, one deposit. We're not going to say no. It's not, it's not like it's only working, like on Binance, you can earn a little bit of money, but it's for the first 200 people who went through the raffle and got selected to do uh -huh. the deposit, right? So, and the, there's a max amount that you could put in. So the beauty of Celsius is that it's, it's for the community, by the community. Uh, again, most of the value is being uh, captured by uh, the users. And you get to select for each coin. If you want to earn in kind, you want BTC on BTC, or you want to earn in sell. And 41% of our users have chosen to earn in sell. And that's why sell has outperformed Bitcoin by 800% in the last 12 months. So... If you earned and sell, you earned a higher rate and it outperformed any coin you would have held otherwise. So the model is proving that the flywheel, again, unlike DeFi, DeFi only works as long as they're showering those free tokens on you, right? Celsius works day and night, seven days a week, high markets, low markets, side markets, mm -hmm. and so on, because our source of income is different than the guys who are trying to copy us. Exactly. And that's why they call them the machine right there, ladies and gentlemen. Because there was the message on point again. Same type of thing. Alex, thanks so much for, uh, for coming in. I really appreciate it. I think that answers, with, without going into the uh, tax advisor situation, that was a, it was a well-put answer as far as what you would do as far as Celsius, uh, as far as DeFi. Just to, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just add to that. The, the, 
what you, what you want to do is really uh, maximize the yield, but at the same time, you need to diversify away from the dollar. Meaning that, that for example, if your choice is, oh, I, I see a 15% yield on a stable coin on Celsius earning in sell, but I'm only seeing 6.2% in Bitcoin. Uh, it's not that it's three times better. It's that because Bitcoin is non-correlated asset and most of your assets already are your house, your car, your your income is all in dollars, you need a non-correlated asset. So actually, even earning less in Bitcoin, assuming Bitcoin doesn't move, right? Bitcoin doubles, triples, of course, it's great. Course, but if it yeah. doesn't move, the diversification is one of the most important things. So it's it's less important if you put it in IRA or you put it in in directly uh, from from your from you did an ACH and bought the coins and put it in. The key is to look at analyze your financial situation, your savings, everything else, and ask yourself: Do you have do you have enough gold? Do you have enough crypto? Because those are the things. If 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 what I think is going to happen is going to happen, meaning the US dollar is going to lose another fifty to ninety percent of its value, and we're going to go through a massive recession or a depression. That, that pool of capital is going to be what's going to save you because your dollars, your home, all the other stuff is not going to get you, uh, uh, you know, out of the out of trouble. It's going to get you even deeper into trouble if you have a mortgage or, or loans or credit card debt and all that stuff. So my recommendation is put as much as you can in these non-correlated assets. If form passes and I'm wrong, great, nothing happened. But if I'm right, you will be happy that you did that. Yeah, and I've, and I've always said once small businesses realize what's going on and they say, hold on, I can put it in the bank or I can put it into Celsius. Oh, I can get loans against that. Oh, and it's, it's really much lower. I have to jump through the hoops. When small businesses like mine figure it all out, I think it's game over. It's 1% uh, interest per year, 1%, right? So you yeah, can't you, beat that. And, you can't and, beat that. Uh, and I think uh, you know a lot of people are recognizing this all over the world and, and – uh, Look, this community is growing super fast now. I'm very excited to see fresh faces. When I see a lot of basic questions, it tells me that we're not just talking to the same people every week, right? So I'm very <laughs> happy to to come on the show, answer any question, and and help educate the newbies and make sure that they're uh, they're doing making the right decisions because we don't want to burn them. We don't want them to get caught in the wrong project or in the wrong, uh, you know. Uh, protocol and and lose their funds right because then they'll never come back and 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 for us to make this mainstream and make this the way that most people earn their uh, their income or yield uh, it, it is we need to convert them one by one yeah makes sense to me all right alex i do not want to keep you because i know that you can go for another thanks hour for, <laughs> thanks so thanks much for, for doing this and keep doing what you're doing all right alex thanks all right, so that's it. So like we talked about, there was two things. First of all, if you're looking for the my one-two punch, uh, which is Celsius and Voyager, in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to look just like this. And it's going to take you to the exchange fees and wallet information. And these are all the different exchanges and wallets that I've ever used and if I recommend them or not. And everything from Coinbase <laughs> to you know Celsius and Voyager, Gemini, Binance, Uniswap, Abra, Kraken, Cash App. I mean, everything. I don't recommend any tour. But uh, it's all right there. It also gives you all the different uh, fees and rates and everything else that you want to see uh, as far as the breakdown. If you, you can... You can go to direct it to the exchange or to the wallet and sign up. That's fine. But if you want to use the affiliate links, they'll give you between $10 and $25. So it's whatever you want to do. Also, just like me and Alex were talking about as far as a cryptocurrency specific IRA fund, there was a video I did recently which talked about how I pay zero in cryptocurrency taxes, which you can find the link to that video right here, which is also in the description. So you can check that out. Lastly, if you couldn't tell, I'm a big believer in Celsius and I really like how it's all put together. Here are the rates for this week, September 4th through 11th, 2020, for what you can get if you have these cryptocurrencies in your Celsius wallet. You don't have to do anything, it just has to be in your wallet. So Bitcoin, you get 6.2, ETH 6.2, USDC 15%. Gold, 6.13, Tether Gold, Celsius, and everything else. You can see it right there. Now, every place is going to fluctuate. And I'm sure you can tell me, oh, this one has a little bit higher here. This one has a little bit higher there. That's fine. Uh, go ahead and do whatever you want. For me, I, I don't believe just in Celsius. I believe in the people behind Celsius. And that's why I'm going to stick with them. And that's why as of today, September 9th, 2020, I put 25% of all of my crypto assets 
is now on Celsius. So I'm not going to put everything into Celsius, but I'm going to put a huge chunk in there because if you're looking at the, some of the top interest rates, it's not doing anything. And especially if you have any type of cryptocurrency on another exchange, why is it on that exchange? Just what I would do, which is what I did, is I took them off from all those exchanges and stuck them on this under the Celsius app because I'm going to gain interest. Now, since I live in Texas, I can't gain interest on any stable coins. But once that hurdle is released on my three businesses, I will probably put a huge chunk of the money that is in there into stable coins and accumulate interest on Celsius because it only makes sense. And this to me is the death of the banks. So that's it for today's video. I want to say thanks for uh, checking it out. Really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up in your left and right. Not sure YouTube kind of controls all that stuff. And uh, go ahead and check those out. So that is it. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.